The Twin Cities have exciting sites and activities for residents and visitors alike. My name is Shannon Tola from Remax Energy, and today I will go into some of the top attractions you should not miss if you are in this Minneapolis and St. Paul area. First up, the Mall of America. The mall has revolutionized the shopping experience. It opened its doors in 1992 and is now a leader in retail, entertainment, and attractions. Mall of America is one of the top tourist destinations in the country, and it is also known around the world. And according to their website, Mall of America hosts more than 400 events a year, ranging from concerts to celebrity appearances and fashion shows. Each year, 40 million people from around the world visit the mall generating nearly $2 billion each year in economic impact for the state. There is so much to do from great shopping to restaurants to a movie theater and more. Comment below why you go to the Mall of America. Do you go early in the morning to get your walking in? Or do you shop until you drop? Do you go for the Nickelodeon Universe theme park or for the Sea Life Minnesota Aquarium? Whatever reason brings me out there, one thing is certain. I always make a stop for Auntie Annie's pretzels. One more thing I absolutely love about the mall is its commitment to sustainable energy initiatives. From solar energy to recycling to converting the fat from its restaurant fryers into more than 4,000 pounds of biodiesel per month. And they have over 30,000 plants and 300 live trees to act as natural air purifiers within the mall. Next up, the Minnesota Zoo. In 1978, the state of Minnesota created the zoo which is an accredited institution of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and is an institutional member of the Alliance of Marine Mammal Parks and Aquariums and the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums. It is located on 485 acres in Apple Valley, Minnesota. Their conservation efforts consist of the Prairie Butterfly Conservation Program, which is saving endangered butterflies from extinction, restoring native mussel populations to the Minnesota rivers and streams. They incorporate green practices throughout the zoo, from large-scale recycling and composting initiatives to environmentally sustainable buildings. And they also support more than 120 conservation projects in 47 countries through the Seal Conversation Grant Program, among other things. The zoo is home to more than 4,500 animals. They are dedicated to the education, offering free admission for field trips, zoo camps, and live animal programs. Comment below and tell me your favorite exhibit at the zoo. My daughters love the tapir and the wolves. Another site not to miss is the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden, which opened in 1988. The garden showcases modern and contemporary art from the Walker Center in the setting of an urban park. It's free, requires no tickets for admission, and is open from 6 a.m. till midnight every day. Uh, do you have a favorite sculpture? I have many favorites, but there is something special about that iconic spoon with the cherry on top. Do you know that it's more than 50 feet long? You should definitely check out Minnehaha Falls, which is one of Minneapolis' oldest and most popular parks. It features a 53-foot waterfall and limestone bluffs, as well as river overlooks. It attracts more than 850,000 visitors annually. There is a wading pool and playground, a disc golf course, walking and biking paths, a volleyball court, and a picnic area. It stretches over 167 acres. The park was officially named Minnehaha State Park when it was purchased by Minneapolis for the state of Minnesota in 1889. The name Minnehaha comes from the words in the Dakota language that mean waterfall. If beer is your thing, you definitely need to check out a brewery. Minnesota is home to some of the USA's finest microbreweries. There are over 80 microbreweries in the Twin Cities and surrounding areas, from Summit Brewing Company to Surly to 612 Brew. You can go on a true taste testing tour of some of the finest craft brews. Comment below, what is your favorite brewery? Okay, the following are date specific, but if you find yourself in town, make sure to check out the Lake Harriet Banshell. This is open during the summer. This scenic setting provides biking and walking trails, water activities, and then a castle inspired band shell that has live music throughout the summer, featuring swing, folk, rock, bluegrass, classical, and more. So this summer, definitely make your way to the Lake Harriet band shell. Then we have the Grand Old Day, which is the largest one day festival in the upper Midwest with over 150 food vendors, a family fun area, art district, 
unique festival gardens, a parade, and so much more. It stretches 30 blocks on Grand Avenue in St. Paul, and it's traditionally held on the first Sunday of June to kick off summer. But due to the pandemic, we will have to wait until 2022 to once again enjoy this massive block party. Then, who can forget about the Minnesota State Fair, often referred to as the Great Minnesota Get-Together? This is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the region. The fair attracts more than 2 million guests annually. It is held the 12 days leading up to and then through Labor Day. There are rides, live entertainment, a haunted house, shopping, competitions. Um, but let's be honest, we all go for the food. I always have to get myself a bucket of those delicious Sweet Martha cookies. Then there's the Basilica Block Party. This is hosted by the radio station City 97.1. It is traditionally held in July, but this year it will be on September 10th and 11th. And for this one weekend, they transform the grounds of the historic Basilica of St. Mary into Minneapolis's largest music festival. Then to welcome fall and end summer, we have the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. They will be celebrating their 50th anniversary this year and they are open on weekends starting August 21st and running through October 3rd. The Minnesota Renaissance Festival has grown to be the largest Renaissance Festival in the United States with an annual attendance of over 300,000 people. For those unfamiliar with what a Renaissance Festival is, it's an interactive outdoor event which focuses on recreating the look and feel of a fictional 16th century England-like fantasy kingdom. There is jousting and shopping, lots of live entertainment, and then definitely people watching entertainment. And lastly, if you are in the Twin Cities during winter, you have to check out the Winter Carnival. There are lots of family friendly activities. There are ice sculpture and snow sculpture competitions. You can meet King Boreas and the Queen of Snows, the mischievous Vulcan and his red caped crew. Uh, they also create an ice castle. I will have to have my daughter compare this one coming in winter to the one made by Elsa in Frozen. Another top attraction to check out year round is either the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis or the Ordway Theater in St. Paul, or maybe just do both. They both bring exceptional theater and musical arts to our city. Finally, the Twin Cities offers great sporting events. Go ahead and click the card above to see my breakdown on the Minnesota sports teams. Thank you for joining me. Let's get out there and enjoy all that the Twin Cities have to offer. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more Twin Cities discovery.